Hey y'all, welcome back to Tobacco Leaf Legacies and Celebrate Crafts. <laughs> I'm Cheryl and I have got my fall Thanksgiving crafts to share with you. I said in the Halloween video that I know there are many people who November 1st, it is suddenly Christmas. And so they celebrate Christmas for two months. I'm not that person. <laughs> as much as I love decorating, as much as I love Christmas, I like to celebrate the holiday that's in the middle. So in between Halloween and Christmas is when I celebrate, decorate for fall and Thanksgiving. So these crafts are all fall Thanksgiving themed. Some of them I got the idea for in the store, just walking around and saying, hmm, put this and this and I can put this together and that'd be cute. And some others were ones that were inspired by watching other craft videos. The, the faux drinks with the spackle on top, I have been watching people do those really cute crafts for two or three years now, the whole time saying, I wanna do that, like that looks fun, that looks cute. <laughs> and just, you know, with everything that I had going on, it just wasn't time for that, so it was time. <laughs> so I am very excited with them. So let me show you what I made. All right, so first up are these frames that I found at the Dollar Tree. They're the same size, but I love, the thing I love about fall is the leaves. And I thought, okay, well, let me do something really cute with these. So I got the yarn, I believe, at Michael's. I wanted something not super thick and chunky like some of them are, but I didn't want the really thin stuff either. So I found this in three different fall colors. And what I did was I tied a knot at the top of it. And then you'll see it's just wrapping time. Um, I decided while I was watching TV one night to, to take them and, and wrap them that way. Once. I got the pieces wrapped. I'd secured them with tape just to hold them in place until I was done. Then what I could do is take the tape off, take the glue stick, and then secure that little piece down that was sticking out, just, you know, cut that off. So we're starting on the next one. And you'll see when I tie these in a knot, the little piece that's sticking out. Now you could probably do this a couple different ways. You could secure that top uh, knot up there with just a little bit of hot glue. I did not. I chose just to kind of fold that little piece down and start wrapping around it. Okay, so we did the second one exactly the same way. Doing the third one exactly the same way. Start with the knot up at the top, fold the little piece down and just wrap, 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 wrap. And you want to keep the tension on it relatively tight because if it starts getting too loose, then it starts unraveling on itself and then you've kind of got to start all over again. So see here at the end, just secured it with a piece of tape until I could get the other piece and start on that part. And it only takes here, it only takes a little bit of hot glue just to secure it. It dries really quick and then you can just cut off all the little excess pieces. I wanted to put something on it that I thought would be cute. This is a set of wooden sayings that I got at the Dollar Tree. I think it came in like a pack of five or six. And then I wanted to paint them with corresponding colors, but I didn't want to be matchy matchy with them. So you'll see what I, how I matched them up here at the end. I also took, once I was done with the paint, which these wood pieces at Dollar Tree, they take the acrylic paint really, really well. So it's not as if with these, you have to do multiple, you know, coats on it. But once these dried, I did take Mod Podge and go ahead and go over them just to seal it a little bit. And then here I'm just securing the little wood pieces onto the frame with some more hot glue. This one I actually kind of had to turn over. It was too hard to see where I needed to put it on the back of the words. And so it made more sense to flip it over and then just put the little bits of hot glue on it that way. And now they're all ready to hang. Now, 
Now this second one, I had absolutely no plans for this. These little glass pumpkins I found at Target in their dollar spot. And I just thought that they were so pretty that I knew I could do something with them. I will tell you, it took me a while to figure out what that was but the little glass bottoms here are actually votive or tea light holders that I got in a pack of four from Dollar Tree. I flipped it upside down, took the glue, glued it together. Now, I ended up going back and adding some E6000. The hot glue and the slick glass surfaces don't really mesh all that well. So if you're doing something like this, use the hot glue, but make sure to add in the E6000 too. And so then just to kind of hide where the two pieces matched, I got this ribbon. I think I got this at Dollar Tree as well and just cut short pieces just to go around it, just to make it look kind of cute. And I had little flowers that I got at the Dollar Tree as well. And what I did with these was I cut the backs because they kind of have long, you know, a little long metal piece on the back of it. And I just cut that off because I wanted to glue it right here to the front. The tea lights that you see on the table, I got them from Dollar Tree as well. Okay, guys, this one had me cracking up in the store. Um, the cutout and the pack of leaves here came from Dollar Tree. And when I saw the turkey and I saw the leaves at the same time, and I was just like, wait a minute, I think these leaves would make really cute feathers on this turkey. Never seen it before, so I, I don't know if this is a thing, if other people have done this, but I did it. And so then what I did was I got my acrylic paint and I wanted to paint the parts that I needed to paint first, and then I could go through and put the leaves on. Now, I've never painted a turkey face, y'all. <laughs> so I had actually looked up on Google, you know, just like cartoon turkey face, that kind of thing. And, you know, it's not too bad, especially for my first one. I think it's kind of cute. I feel like I should have taken his beak part a little further back. It, it's kind of short, but you know, with him facing at an angle like that, that also made it funny too. But regardless, like I said, first time I've ever done that and I think that it was, it turned out kind of cute. His feet here, I had actually mixed kind of a, a couple colors. I took yellow and I think some of the brown, just, just sort of muddle it up a little bit instead of making his feet bright yellow. And you'll see here, now I finally got smart and started using the hot glue with the leaves. Initially, I thought I was going to use Mod Podge. Okay, don't use Mod Podge on something like this. Just go ahead, use the hot glue. It'll secure it so much quicker and it is less of a mess. And you'll see I also started at the back. You kind of or at the back on the top, however you want to put it. And then you work your way forward. That way it looks like these are all his feathers. This was really fun to work on. I have to say. Oh, his eyes. I'm taking my Sharpie here, just, just kind of doing his little beak and outlining that. And then I took a pencil, again, looking at the little cartoon image that I had pulled up and, you know, kind of sketched the eyes with the pencil first. Then I took the Sharpie and outlined that. Took my acrylic white paint to, you know, fill in, color in, do his eyes. And then I also took, once that had dried, I took the black Sharpie again to do his little eyeballs. <laughs> it's okay if he makes you laugh, he makes me laugh too. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now this one is really quick and really simple. I found the I Love Fall Most of All. I think I found that at, at Dollar General. And the piece of wood, I believe I got that at Joann's. And what I did was I had this walnut stain, which I love this stain. Oh my gosh, I love dark wood anyway. And so I just stained this piece of wood real quick, which it was just perfect. I just had to do the one coat on it, wipe it off, and and I didn't even anticipate that it was going to match my other sign so well. But I just took some more hot glue and put it there. Now the top of that that I had cut off, just secured it on the back of the other piece of wood and then took these from some floral, you know, fall picks that I had and just glued them right on the top of it just to make it look a little pretty. And then that was it with this one. Handmade crafts don't always have to be complicated. Sometimes they can be really simple. This is an idea that I got in the store while I was looking at these gnomes. Now, I will admit, I am actually not a gnome lover. I know that they are very popular with a lot of people, but I just wanted to give these a little bit of a different paint job. Now, if you want to get serious about redoing this, take like a white prim primer, uh, like a spray paint and go outside and just paint the whole thing. And then you can, you know, start over with this clean slate. I didn't want to do that. I just went ahead and took my acrylic paints and went over some things. You see, I'm changing the color of her dress. I wanted their color scheme to be kind of fall candy corn in nature. So there's a lot of white, yellow, orange with a little bit of brown. And it did take you know, probably two or three, maybe even four coats on some of these to, to get the color right. With these, since she was holding pumpkins, I thought it would be fun to cut these in half and just kind of make that 3D looking. So I took my hot knife here and I cut these in half. I ended up using three of the orange ones instead of the white one. And what I did was add some of the orange acrylic paint on here just because I knew that the little pumpkin pieces wouldn't cover it 100%. And so I wanted to have some orange underneath it. Now here, I took the stems out and they had a little round piece at the top. So for them to lie flat, I had to cut, you know, just part of that as well. So I put these together, put a little bit of hot glue on it and stuck them down back in place. And she got a cute little candy corn on her dress that I just found the image online, printed it out and put Mod Podge on it to basically glue it on. And then once both of these little gnomes were done, I took Mod Podge and went over both of them, both to kind of seal in the paint and protect it a little bit and just make it a little more shiny. This guy didn't have as much that I wanted to do to him. I did want to change the color of what little bit of clothes was showing. And I had decided that for his little 3D element, since he had the cute little leaf on his hat, I went back to the same little floral pick and cut off a couple pieces to put on there. Don't be, uh, don't be afraid to find pieces like this in the store and maybe you like the design but you don't love the colors. It's really easy to take things like this and put your own color spin on it.
This is something that I saw another crafter do where she took these rounds, which these I just got at Dollar Tree. I made sure to, to tape kind of the top there where that jute twine is so that I wouldn't get stain on it. But stain this, wipe it all off, and then I had also taken that round floral piece. I got that at Dollar Tree as well. Took my hot knife, cut that in half, and I took my brown acrylic paint and painted around most of it. You know, that one backside was going to be glued down, so I didn't worry about that. Now, I cut my other round. I just cut that in half and went ahead and stained that the same way. And with the glue here, I'm using both the E6000 and the hot glue to secure it in place. Once that's set, it was time to put the ribbon here just at the top. Because it was cut, I just felt like that needed just a slight embellishment just to kind of cover where it was cut. Took the hot glue and just secured the ends here on the back. Then it was time for the florals. <laughs> so I got all of these at Dollar Tree and I went through and pulled some of these apart because they were, you know, some of them were all together in a bunch and I didn't want that. I just wanted pieces of them. So just kind of cut the tape off, pull them off, and then you can do what you want with them. So I took a few minutes and was kind of figuring out from sort of back to front, what did I want to put in it? How did I want it to look? That kind of thing. And then it was just a matter of getting them ready and sticking them down into the styrofoam. Then to put this part back on, same thing. Just use some more E6000 and some more hot glue and stood it up to make sure I had it even and everything on the bottom. And then I took this little bow. This was on one of the picks and I just thought it needed a little something. I have a word to, to go on it, but I thought this looked really cute just to glue it in the corner. You'll see I started doing this with the acrylic. Okay, don't, don't do acrylic on this. It just takes forever and it just doesn't turn out that nice. I ended up taking it outside. This thankful word, I got this in a pack of like three at Dollar Tree and I ended up spray painting it and that was just so much smarter. <laughs> This was a last minute thing that I decided that I wanted to do. Um, basically, all of this came from Dollar Tree. I took the little mirror apart. It was just glued onto the little piece of cardboard there. Um, I got that at Dollar Tree, took the mirror off, traced it onto the vinyl. This is actually the first time that I've ever worked with the vinyl and it was kind of fun. I would like to do it again. So many colors and, and different styles for you to work with. So once I got that traced, I went ahead and trimmed that so that I could put that piece back on the mirror. Now I did make sure to clean it well so that this would adhere properly. Takes a couple tries, but I got it back on there. I'm taking the hot glue and a little bit of E6000 to secure it back to the cardboard. And then it goes back in the frame. It's just got little, you can just kind of pop it back in place real easily. Then on the front, this was a pack. I got this at Dollar Tree as well. And the season of change really spoke to me because of everything that has obviously been going on in my life for a couple years. And I had these three leaves that I got at Dollar Tree as well. And they're not supposed to be, but to me, they look like tobacco leaves. And so I just thought, oh, well, this is gonna be really neat. So I took the Mod Podge and put on the back of the little window cling to attach it, kind of glue it down to the vinyl. 
And then I took a little bit of hot glue to secure the leaves down. And then I made the little bow to finish it off. It's a nice reminder. This is one that I have been wanting to try for a long time, y'all. I got this cut out at Dollar Tree. I got these paint pours at Dollar Tree in the plus section. And this is so easy and so fun. You just pour the paints in a cup. Yes, you just pour them all on top of each other like that. Because this is what happens when you pour them out. They mix together and it all becomes sort of marbly and just really pretty. And what you do, make sure you're working over something like I am and you just start moving it around until you get the coverage that you want. You see, I had to go in and add a little bit more because the leaf form is kind of hard. That's okay. And then you just work with it and shift it and move it and hold it until it is completely covered. Now it did take two or three days to dry and took a little bit longer, which that was fine. But then once it finally dried, again, same thing. I took the Mod Podge and went over it to both protect it, seal it, and give it kind of a little shiny coat. I'm really, really happy with this and I can't wait to do this again. Since I cut the little jute twine at the top, I decided I don't really like jute twine anyway. I know a lot of people love it, I do not. And so I went ahead and took some orange ribbon that I had and just gave it a new holder. The colors, they're just amazing. This is one that I have been wanting to try for a long time. I got the little mug from Hobby Lobby and I have seen people make these like faux whipped cream toppers out of spackle. Okay, the spackle actually had to get at Target. The bags and the tips here, I got at Dollar Tree. Um, the straws, I think I actually ordered on Amazon. There's some sprinkles that I ordered from Etsy. This is the first time that I'd ever done this. You take the spackle, you mix it in a cup. You do have to add just a little bit of water and there is there is a science to getting it just right. I had actually had to do this a couple times. You have to add a little bit of water, but you don't want to add too much water because then it doesn't work right when you go to pipe it. You want it kind of like the consistency of icing, especially so that it'll hold its shape. I took the little ball here, cut it in half, and put that down on the styrofoam so that it would give my topper so that the whole thing wouldn't be spackle. And then it gave me kind of a base to work around. You do the, the top of it just like you would a cupcake. This particular spackle, it starts out pink and it dries white. So no, it's not going to stay pink. Then anything that you're going to put on the top of it, you need to do right now. You need to do while it's wet. And so I took my sprinkles and my little tweezers there and the little straw and got that all situated on it. I'm using the little window cling just to decorate the mug. Once it's done, peel it off the styrofoam and then you glue it on top. I had taken, because the spackle dries Oh, kind of plain, not really bright white or, or anything. I took some Mod Podge to give it that shiny finish. All right, guys, that is everything that I have to show you this time. Hope you enjoyed seeing the cute things that I made. Maybe the little turkey gave you a little laugh. <laughs> he was actually one of my favorite things to make. I was wandering around the store when I saw the cutout and saw the leaves and just thought, hmm, leaves could be feathers, right? 
<laughs> so I was really happy with how he turned out. I encourage you, if you like DIYs, if you like crafts, maybe you just like watching people do crafts. I mean, you know, that can kind of be relaxing in and of itself to watch somebody else do the crafts. <laughs> so I encourage you to get on YouTube and search for DIYs. There are just so many awesome creators out there in the, the DIY community. And maybe they will inspire you to, like me, try some of the things they're doing, or maybe it'll give you your own idea. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, time is precious. Carpe diem, seize the day. I'll see you next time.